All right, welcome to our fifth example for chapter two. And this is the last one for section 2.5 out of the OpenStax College Physics book. The remaining examples that we will see in this chapter deal with um, vertical motion, so up and down motion, falling objects. In this example, we finally don't have a car. <laughs> so when we draw our picture, Really, the arrows are the only thing that matters, but I like to have at least a little bit of sense of what's going on. So a sliding box, that means it's already moving, is decelerating. That's a fancy way of saying slowing down. So in our picture, we want the acceleration to point in the opposite direction. Now, when we start to take, a, take stock of what information we have, we know that the box is sliding, but we don't know how fast it is currently going. But we know it's going to be a positive number, the way that we drew the picture. So for the acceleration, because that arrow points to the left, we must put a negative sign. So the amount, the rate, is 3.4, but the information and context of the problem, which is why the picture is the first step always, tells us that it's negative. Now we're told that the box slides 5 meters before it stops. So at some initial zero point, it was moving. And then at 5 meters, it's not. Which means that the final velocity is 0 meters per second. And that's because of the word stops. And the initial position is 0 meters. And finally, the final position is 5 meters. All of this information is in the first sentence and a half of the problem. So the third step is to rephrase the question. We know that normally we have seen find blank when blank. But I mentioned this I think in the first example, but this is the first time we're seeing it in action, this is really tough for initial velocity. It's true that it's tough for acceleration, and we've seen that twice now, but we want to recognize that this isn't all that useful a method when we're trying to find the initial velocity. Instead, what we're trying to do is to find two things that are true at the same time at the end of the problem. So what we have at the end of the problem is the final velocity is zero and the final position is five meters. So we're finding the initial velocity if later on these two things, v is zero when x is 5. Okay, so that gives us the vx equation. And just like when this showed up um, in a previous example, the other way that we could have figured this out was that in our list we have no time information and we're not searching for it. So the no time in equation is the VX equation. So no matter how we figured it out, so no matter how we figured it out, step four is to write down the equation, the VX equation that we've just identified without plugging numbers in gives ourselves context and now we can plug numbers in knowing where they go. The final velocity is in our list. We put zero there. The initial velocity is the thing we're looking for. The negative sign on the acceleration is probably the single most important part of this problem. And then five minus zero. So we have zero equals the initial velocity squared minus 34. All right, so we're going to add 34 to both sides so that we get 34 on the left, and that cancels out to just have v squared on the right. So we'll take the square root of both of these numbers, 
and we will get 5.83 meters per second. Now something that I have not mentioned in an example yet, and it will become a significantly important part of section 2.7, is that mathematically when we take a square root, this could be a plus or minus attached to this. We have to recognize that in the situation as we drew it, the box is moving to the right and we add that plus sign. We will see situations in chapter 2.7, section 2.7, where we have to recognize that a negative sign is needed once we take the square root. All right, and then the last step of does this make sense? This isn't a car, so uh, we need to recognize that the velocity should be kind of low. Somebody shoved this box before we started looking at it, and 5.83 meters per second, or 5.8, or even 6 meters per second, those numbers are reasonable for a box that is about to slow down, is in the process of slowing down. And um, there was no negative under the square root. That's a common thing to happen if we forgot this. So that's a great step six, too. We can't ever have a negative number inside the square root in physics because that creates an imaginary number. And in physics, we have real situations, not imaginary situations. So in this case, yes, everything's fine. But if we'd forgotten the minus sign, that would have been a no, that's a problem because we have a imaginary number attached to it, but we don't here and we're good to go. So the next video in the sequence is the lecture portion for section 2.7, and then we'll have a whole bunch more examples to follow that using the same process, but we'll be going up and down instead of side to side. See you in those next videos.